Thank you all. That was fun. See you all next week. There we go. Done. Right, we are live. So, all right. We're going to have a debate coverage. We're going to have some... Uh, well, I'm sorry, Brandon. I know you don't want to talk right now. I know you're just listening. But, yes, we're going to put fun at you. And I'm going to take the piss out of Caleb. Why not? Because I can. That's why. Because it was the funniest thing. Um, and, yeah, it was extremely funny. In fact, me and Chase didn't even need to drink beer that night. We had such a good laugh just reading what you were talking about. Um, Our soul's all out of you. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so what were your initial thoughts after reading it, Chase? Did you follow it all? No. Good. Thank you. Thank you for that input. <laughs> Appreciate you preparing for this moment, Chase. It really does my heart well to know you're paying attention. I prepared as much for this as I do every week. Not at all. <laughs> the fact he turned up with all the preparation he needed. Yeah. Uh, by the way, Brandon says he's trying to join, so. Yeah, I saw that. He's in the chat right now. Okay. He says, quiet, red coat. He must be talking to Chris. <laughs> 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 so I found it quite a good debate. I really appreciate both you guys' input on there. And uh, I think you touched subjects that I'd never actually thought of before, like who was the Nephilim, you know? Was it actually demon-possessed people? Because you always imagine the Nephilim being some kind of, I don't know what it was. It was weird how you kind of describing, like, angels didn't have genitalia. That was my first thought I thought is, how do you know? Yeah. Because it's kind of like, you, you might not see that they reproduce, but there's nothing about that in the Bible. But uh, how do we know Why that they don't have genitalia? Because what? They're not given in marriage. What's the purpose of marriage? Uh, yeah. So your wife cleans up after you, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, I guess it's kind of a logical implication or logic speculation that it is anything. Uh, I think it's kind of the idea, like you just said it, they're not given in marriage, so what's the point of having a penis? Um, you know, or, and I, I'm guessing they don't go to the bathroom either, but funny thing, because they eat in Genesis chapter 18 and wash their feet and drink, so it's like, hmm, you know, well, it, make, it, make, it makes you wonder. Was it... Uh... Wasn't a meal prepared for uh, the three that showed up to Abraham's camp? Yep, God and his two messengers. And then the two messengers are later sent to Sodom and Gomorrah, where they were nearly raped. <laughs> well, yeah, except for the part where they broke out their swords and started killing people with their... <laughs> yeah. Are you referring to that awful film? <laughs> you mean that wasn't in the Bible? No, they blinded them, and then they walked right out, or ran right out. I don't know. They got out of the city. It's all mattered. They did somersaults and flips as they karate chopped people on the way out. <laughs> sure, sure. So here's an interesting thought that I actually thought was, uh, we know that sin basically corrupts the flesh. But I think, yeah. I think you brought this point up, Caleb. You talked about how... People, the, the women, was it the women? Or somebody was demon-possessed, basically. Then yeah. Then, of course, with a woman who produced the Nephilim, I think is what you kind of imply. Yeah, yeah. That's the, that's the only logical way I see that happening, uh, is that some sort of demonic possession took place here. Uh, what made me think is the whole, you know, you know, pagan idea of, you know, temple prostitution, for that matter. Which is universal. A lot of a lot of pagan cultures practice this, including the Aztecs, the Celts, um, the uh, I mean, tons of other nations: the Greeks, Romans, you name it. But not the. Uh, uh, well, <laughs> if you count the Celts, uh, the Britons, you know, the early Britons were. In... Okay. Okay. But I mean, uh, but yeah. So anyway, so temple prostitution. The whole idea is that you came to the temple and the the lady would call forth their god or goddess, whoever they represented at that temple, and the god, quote-unquote, would possess this prostitute, and you would have sex with the goddess or the god, depending on what temple you went to. But So basically, that's ah. kind of the implication I draw. Sounds very Mormon. Right. 
Well, I mean, Morgan, Mormonism is paganism, so I mean... It is, yeah. uh, it is Christian, come on now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. But yeah, the, the, the basic idea, I think, was the crux for me in the debate. The one thing that was kind of the highlight, I think, was when we got, when I started, I don't remember if I was questioning Brandon or he was questioning me, but the basic thing was when, when we were going through the Q&A and Brandon uh, said that Nephilim simply means bully or tyrant. And so I went and pulled up, I said, okay, so, and then he made the, the contention that basically anybody could be a bully or a tyrant, including the Pope, Right. And I'm like, well, yeah, he certainly is a bully and he certainly is a tyrant. But so I go and pull out the Septuagint, Greek translation of the Old Testament. And in Genesis chapter 2, verse 6, they render the term Nephilim in Greek as gigantis. So right? we're just going right to the point where Brandon admits that he loses the debate. We're just going to jump right into that? No, oh, hell, why not? Out so we can actually have the conversation before we finish. <laughs> Yeah, and so, but, but anyway, so I pull that out because the reason why most of our translations, modern translations, say, and there were giants on the earth in those days, instead of saying, and there were Nephilim on the earth in those days, is because of the Septuagint's translation of the word Nephilim to Gigantis. So, the, I mean, when you look at the context and the etymology for the word Gigantis, uh, it has the connotation from the Greek myth about uh, Prometheus when he makes the first human beings out of clay, right? But he also makes giants out of mud as well, but it literally means born of earth, right? Is what, is what the root word of Gigantus means, roughly. What? Are you getting into Gnosticism now? No. <laughs> no. Um, and so basically the, so the writers of the Septuagint, which are way smarter than me and probably anyone here, decided that instead of using the word bully or tyrant, which they very well could have used, because the Greek word for, for tyrant is tyrannos, right? They decided, we're going to use gigantis. So evidently, the Hebrew translators believed that the Nephilim were giants. And do you think so, was that, or do you think it was an idiom? Like, an idiom like, is in what way? Well, like the way that Brandon came back with a really good... Uh, counter argument to your point there he was talking about how before he threw it away before he threw it away and said he didn't know anything about the Septuagint's translation yeah just before he threw it away i was trying to not get to that subject to like <laughs> <laughs> no we're laying it bare here man well is it the case of we get we get to the brandon throwing it all away and we just basically finish up or we just keep asking you questions and we'll get a novel in return so that's kind of what i was going for Okay, okay. Whatever you want to do, it's your show. So that you could give us a novel. Um, <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> but like you talked about media giants, you know, it's kind of descriptive of people being large in the kind of the areas that they were in that kind of sense. What did you think of that rebuttal? As as in like large in reputation, like yeah. saying saying like uh, the guys like Vanderbilt and Carnegie um, were the big business giants. Yeah. Okay, well, here's the problem I have with that is that those kind of idioms seem to work just fine for our Anglo-Saxon English-speaking culture. But the problem is, how do you prove that those kind of idioms were used back in the Hebrew language or even the Greek, for that matter? How do you prove that would have been That's the connotation? How, how? It's in the King James Version. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> but no, but uh, there's actually, actually, now that you bring that up, Simon, there actually is a word for that, for a person who has a big, you know, has a large reputation or, or a reputation which precedes them. And the word for that is gibberim. And that means a mighty man, right? It's, right. It's often, yeah, it's often used in the context of a warrior for David's mighty men are called gibberim, right? Uh, and in the NLT and the NIV, when it comes to the term gibberim, it says heroes. It actually well, uses the word heroes. So, I, I guess the question then would be, why did they seem like grasshoppers? I mean, at, at which that's point, exactly right. How, how far do we take this literal? Hello. Because Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, I just uh, I'm getting my voice back a little bit. I may be a little raspy. Oh my God! You do sound like a redneck. They weren't kidding. Yeah. <laughs> I never would have guessed, bro. 
just lost uh, eight points of my um, intelligent reputation. No, no, you don't sound you don't sound unintelligent. You sound like a southern gentleman. So it's just yeah, I was okay. just I was just really surprised. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Well, about your uh, Greek mythology, uh, Gigantes. Sure. The uh, Alexandrian Jews, uh, who I guess were associated with Alexander the Great. Um, I'm looking at a definition here, and it says that the mm -hmm. uh, were a race of great strength and aggression, though not necessarily of great size. Okay. So uh, they were known for the, uh, forgive me, I don't know how to pronounce this word, but the uh, Gigantomachy, their battle with the Olympian gods. So apparently yeah. these were, yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, the Gigantomachy. They, they weren't necessarily physically large, but they were powerful in aggression and war and, and battle. So they were kind of warriors. Of right. Uh, yeah, like Hercules, something like that, yeah. And, the, and Achilles, um, others like that. And we've got to say, like, because I'm under six foot tall, so all the best things do come in small packages. Right, and you got to also understand that, you know, the average Jew was, what, five foot five? So, I mean, a guy who could be six foot five or, you know, or more would, would seem gigantic to a five foot five Jew. Oh, Jews well, are hot. I What's imagine that? ancient Jews were a lot shorter. Probably, yeah. Well, there you go. Simon's Jewish. He's, he's about as Jewish as I am Cherokee, dude. <laughs> hey, you see this forehead? Look, that's definitely a Jewish forehead. Yeah, do you got the Jewish nose at all? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> who, who was that one guy, Simon, sure. that called you a Jew, said your name was Jewish? <laughs> oh, yeah, the little Martian guy. <laughs> Ryan? Oh, uh, yeah, Ryan Knight, yeah. <laughs> I remember. Oh, man, yeah. But so that was... Well, then, on what I was trying to say before is we know that sin does actually corrupt the flesh, hence why we get sickness and disease, for instance. It does actually corrupt the flesh. So yeah. I think your point there about <clears throat> does when somebody get possessed by a demon, does it alter their physical body? If you think about a fallen angel, basically they are a very sinful being. Are they, would you maybe think that they're maybe more sinful? Maybe they've got more of a direct influence of the sin within their life. And that's hence why you see that maybe they do produce these giant offspring. Or, or at least, or at least, offspring that are significantly different from a normal human being in some sort of way, whether that's in the strength or intelligence or something like that. Um, the one thing I, I could say, let me pull it up. Uh, it's from the Gospel of John. Hang on a minute. Let me see. And the Gospel according to John. Okay. Okay. Four perspectives, one gospel. Yes. Thank yes. You. St. John, you're right. St. John the Revelator. How's that? Was it Johan? <laughs> Johanan, yeah. Uh, okay, Mark 5. If y'all want to go there, y'all don't have to. Uh, this is the story, just roughly, of the Gerasenes and the, the naked what, dude, what, right? What verse? Uh, Mark 5, uh, start at verse 3. It, it describes this guy, and there's actually two of them. But Mark only records one of them. All right, let me... Uh, okay, okay. You want to go ahead and read, or...? No, we can pull it up right here. Okay. There we go. You want me to go for it, or...? So Mark 5, 3, I'll just Mark 5 in general. Uh, Mark chapter 5, verse 3. But, I mean, you could read the whole verse, to, the whole chapter to get the context, but there's this one particular thing that happens in 3 and 4 that's interesting about the description of this possessed individual okay no. all right you want me to read it yeah all right and he lived in the tombs and no one could bind him anymore not even with a chain for he had often been bound with shackles and chains but he wrenched the chains apart and broke the shackles into pieces and no one had the strength to subdue him. Thanks, Mom. Appreciate it. My uh, my experience with insane people is, uh, for some reason, they they're kind of strong. Yeah. Going berserk. Uh, mm -hmm. And 
And it, I don't know if you guys have ever wondered is why the possessed man was in the tombs. Yeah. I'd get suggested demons like death or the, you know, or something like that. Well, some, some of those ancient, uh, pagan cultures, they used to, uh, it's what's referred to as necromancy. They used to uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. talk to their dead ancestors. And uh, I don't know if you've heard of uh, familiar spirits in the Old Testament. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that literally means you know, relative, dead relative spirits. Um, and they used to, um, I think Septuagint uh, translated it as, uh, they translated it as bottles. Uh, they used to take goat stomachs and they, uh, the necromancers, the mediums, the psychics of the day, they would literally take goat stomachs, which were uh, bottles back then. They, I guess they stored water, canteen type deal. Um, they would use them as puppets on their hands and they would, people mm. would pay them to come talk to their dead ends. It's the same exact thing as the tarot card readers, the uh, mediums, the psychics that we have. Palm today. readers, yeah, Ouija boards, yeah. And, and the guy was obviously uh, a Gentile, He or he was living in a Gentile area. Pigs, uh, yeah. Pigs do not raise swine, so... Yeah, that's just, that's just my input on that. So I think it was insane. Yeah, I mean, it's just, yeah, he's definitely, yeah, I mean, but then it's, you know, it's more than just one demon, too, at the end of the day. It's it's many of them. The name well, is Legion. On that. Yeah, go ahead. So, uh, we used to have a rule in England when we used to go out drinking on a Friday night. Our Friday nights were beer, a good fight, a curry, back to the pub again. That was our Friday night. Mm -hmm. The rule we live by is, you never fight somebody who's mental because yeah. like basically like Brandon says, you know, people who do have mental disabilities in a way do seem to have this superhuman strength and so well, it, you never get into a fight with them. But going back to that and thinking about it, reading what the scriptures actually are saying here, it's talking about he broke chains all the time. Yeah, they, they shackle him and he just snaps them. Just yeah. snap. Now, I don't even think that a person with a mental disability would have the strength to lift. No, they put them in straight jackets all the time. But would he have the strength, do you think, to break chains and shackles? I don't think so. Well, not, not normally. I don't, I don't know. We probably think of chains as the chains we have today of forged, cold forged steel. Um, the question is what were ancient chains made of 2,000 years ago? I don't know. It was probably cast iron, and I work with a lot of metal at work. Cast iron's fairly brittle. So I, I don't the know. question is, is, is chain the translation? Um, you know what I mean? Is that just what they translated the word to, or does it mean strong binding? You know, so. Uh, I got some pictures of Roman era chains if you want to see what they look like roughly as long as you're not wearing them no. <laughs> yeah, but that, that doesn't matter what matters is what well, for what our is, viewers sake what is the text saying what what text is this uh mark chapter five and then we were specifically discussing three and four so okay is that, is that where it says, uh, he lived in the tombs, no one could bind him anymore? Yeah. And so, to see what, not even with chains. Because the question is, is that what it means? It, it means a light bond, uh, a light chain, a light bond. Um, uncertain origin. Uh, you know, I'm looking at strong, so this is very limited here. But that, that's kind of what I'm. That's kind of what I'm looking at. You know what? <coughs> Excuse me. Because that kind of is the question, and Romans are they're very ingenious, man. I mean, they, they're they're great at the things that they did. Mm -hmm. So the question is kind of: Is that something that was? widely available in that area um you know we we really are coming back to type of material here but, well, well they made but, in china basically yeah there you go exactly yeah and but i know this that roman gladiuses were definitely made of steel they used steel to their advantage quite a bit because that was one of the main factors that they used to conquer neighboring 
uh, Celtic tribes and stuff like that was the fact that they had steel swords and their enemies generally until they were able to establish trade had cast iron, which you put cast iron against, against a steel sword. I mean, it's, well, it's a definite advantage. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. You got to look at expenses too. Of course, the military is going to yeah. have, you know, they're going to have the better tools and the better weapons. And, you know, of course, the Roman government will as well. So, you know, they, we want to be careful to not be too anachronistic here. That's, that's just all I'm saying. I mean, I, I have well, no idea. Well, yeah, sure. But the, uh, the question I would ask is why, well, I mean, we know that John included the detail because the Holy Spirit told him to do it. But, but why include that detail at all? if it was a flimsy little chain that anybody on a high or anybody on a trip could easily break or a prisoner could easily break if they really wanted to. It sounds expressive there to actually imply the strength of the person. Right, exactly. It seems to be drawing attention to his strength, you know. So what do you do with definition, a light chain or bond? I'm guessing that would be, I mean, this is a guess. I don't know. Maybe you can tell me, but maybe like handcuffs, you know, basically handcuffs versus, you know, the change they put on guys that are going to death row, you know. Okay, maybe. here's what I you know. do. Okay, you get yourself a strong concordance. <laughs> <laughs> I have a strong concordance right here. I'm going to, it's just that it's hard for me to switch between the Zoom and the whatnot here. So, let's see here. I've got it in. Physical. Yeah, go ahead and do it. I can pick it up for you if you want. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, wait a minute. I got my new Bible hub. Out back. That has my strong coordinates in it. Actually, uh, Vines might be, uh, provide a better explanation. Good. Can you make it in English as well, please? <laughs> oh, let's see here. Oh, wait. I can pull up the Greek, too, while we're at it. And we, uh, it's not in Vines, so I don't know. We never, do want to be careful here so that we don't, you know, make any kind of mental illness, uh, you know, demon possession. No, absolutely not. I think there's definitely a difference between mental illness and demon possession, though they're not both always exclusive, you know. Yeah, yeah right. Bones for today. <clears throat> right. The word used for chain in Greek, I don't, I'm probably going to butcher this, but it's halisasin. Whatever that means. Let me see what we got here. Uh, this is not helping. Let's see. The word is the same chain. The same word for chain. It give it's given me the other places it's used. Um, this same word for chain is also used in Acts chapter twelve, verse six. Let me see what that is. I guess technically we do kind of got to give them some kind of credit because I would think they would know how to bind people back then. Sure. Uh, sure they did. They took prisoners and there were slave markets. I mean, we use plastic straps today to bind people. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, here's the same occurrence again, Chase. Uh, Acts chapter 12, verse 6. It's about when Peter's arrested. It says, now when Herod was about to bring him out, on that very night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains and sentries before the door, sentries before the door were guarding the prison. And, you know, the whole point, you know, that whole thing, you know, whenever Peter escaped was that the soldiers, you know, if they had a prisoner escape, they put him to death, right? So I'm guessing that the chains they put on you had better work if your life is to so whatever it is it had to be something strong enough to hold you down or at least to keep you oh, from running away yeah, right I, I would say so i mean i wasn't trying to argue not that i'm just no 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 i'm just saying that yeah you know maybe maybe that's what it means by a light chain versus like a chain versus a you know one you would chain a bunch of slaves to for a caravan you know where you shack your feet are shackled and you're chained to a guy behind you versus something where a roman guard arrested somebody you know i don't know that's what I would think. Well, another point is um, it doesn't say he broke the chains. It says uh, in my King James version, by the way, it says. Uh, I'm yeah, just kidding. the only. It the says. Only, <laughs> the only proper. Yeah, the the chains have been plucked asunder. So I don't know. Uh, 
plucked asunder. Hmm. Yeah, that's what it says. Plucked, I just picture chains popping out of a, whatever they built their houses out of, you know, mortar and bricks. So I don't, I don't know. That's like kind of like chain to the wall kind of thing? Yeah. Let me see uh, here. You should switch to the ESV. I've, I've got I've got modern translations. I was just I was just kidding, man. Let me see. Oh, right here. Let's see. Yeah, it says right here the Greek word for the two words they use here because it says the shackles he shattered. So the word it says Greek and the Greek word this means to shatter. The word used for chains the whole plucking asunder. The word for that means torn in two. In the oh. Greek. Okay. And we've also got in Luke 8, where we talk about uh, another version of it. It talks about chains and shackles. So it was just more yeah. chains. So it was actually a little bit worse. But if you actually go to uh, Matthew 8, it actually talks about two men, not just one. Yeah. Yeah, two of them. So maybe they were cheating. I mean, and there are guys that, you know, I'm not still arguing against it, but there are guys, you know, like go by names like Big Bubba and, <laughs> you know, just corn fed giant dudes that, you know, they're pretty stout and they do some, you watch Strong Man, you know, people like that. I mean, he could have been insane, but that's just, I'm just speculating now. I haven't thought about this point before, but it's a very good point. So, yeah. I mean, just from what, it seems like this whole, I mean, the ultimate end of depravity, especially with anything that the worship of anything but Almighty God, you know, paganism, you know, it, a lot of the things, of course, we all know this, that it espouses are completely opposite of, you know, what the Bible says is good. I mean, for instance, like in ancient Greece, a blind person was said to be wise. <laughs> Or uh, and in in Philistine culture, if memory serves me right, I can't remember if it's Philistine or Canaanite culture, but people who were mad were said to be, uh, again, the wisest person on the planet. So you have kind of this this backwards kind of thinking in a lot of ways, superstitious kind of thing, and it would it would make sense to me that people who were pagans in Noah's flood day that they would seek out, you know, demonic possession rather than flee from it. Were a natural person who you know, like a Jew would know, yeah, you don't want to mess with this stuff, you know, witchcraft and whatnot. Well, but they did, yeah. so. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and we kind of see that going on today, too, where if you just, you know, spout a whole bunch of platitudes, you, you sound wise, but once you investigate them and dissect them, they start to crumble in your hands. Absolutely. Now, do you think there was a different usage of the word Nephilim? Because I know that Brandon brought up that it meant bully or tyrant, which is kind of how uh, Strong's Hebrew basically translates it as well as a, a, a def definition. So do you think that they were using the word Nephilim there to say that they were giant bullies or giant tyrants when describing the sons of Anak? in relation to saying the Nephilim was something completely different in Genesis as to what we see in Numbers. Like the sons of Anak as in Og of Bashan and guys like that? But if you look at Numbers 13, 33, where it talks about it. Numbers 13, 33. Let's see. Let me go there real quick. I, love the I, would, say it's the, I would say it's the same word, same definition, just... I would imagine if, if a man was a giant man, I mean, he's going to be a bully. If you got a giant race of people and a bunch of little four foot six Jews, you know, running after them, uh, it's going to be pretty intimidating and they're going to be, they're going to appear as bullies and tyrants. In my opinion, I'm sure I, I do believe the uh, numbers 13, they were a very large, you know, giant men, maybe right. not necessarily, uh, eight foot or nine foot because we know I mean we know today what happens when somebody does grow you know exceed seven foot they start having you know serious medical problems heart problems 
Right. Um, so I would say these are probably were, you know, there are several races today that, you know, are very tall, known for their tall. Um, you know, you, you got some of the Africans brought over in the slave trade. The Mandingos were famous for their large size and brute strength and were yeah. often, you know, gathered in fight pits and stuff like that. So, I mean, somebody like that, you know, you picture, you know, a six foot, you know, eight guy built, and then you got these little short Jews running up. They're going to be, you know, they're going to be terrified, and, and these guys are going to be up here as bullies and tyrants to those Jews. Uh, and I do believe they, you know, were giant in our definition of large. So, but I believe it goes both ways, if that makes sense. Let's see how big Og of Bashan was. Y'all, y'all, y'all know who Og of Bashan is, right? From from uh, the Bible, right? In the Book of Numbers, Numbers chapter twenty-one, verse or chapter twenty-one, and Deuteronomy chapter three talk about their king. Pretty big fella, from what he says here. Let me see. I read twenty-one. I don't remember that. Okay, let me see if I can pull it up. Hang on a minute. Shouldn't take about a second. Somebody was nine foot, weren't? Or was that Goliath? Or Goliath was about nine foot. Yeah. Uh, although, although there's some textual variance there because one measurement gives him six cubits in a span. The other one says four cubits in a span. So, depending. Uh, yeah, here we go. Og, king of Bashan, was the last of the Raphaites. This is Deuteronomy 3.11. His bed was decorated with iron and was more than nine cubits long and four cubits wide. Wow, that's a big bed. New Living says 13 feet long, six feet wide. Oh, well, my bed's bigger than I am. Oh, well, yeah, I would think. So let's so, 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 if you were a king of a pagan nation with all those hot honeys chasing after you, you'd need to have a big bed. Yeah, you'd have to have plenty of room for all the. Exactly. So that's kind of what is going down there, really, if you think about it. I mean, if, we, uh, if it doesn't allude to his actual physical height, uh, the size of the bed, you know, you you got multiple wives and concubines. I'm sure Solomon's if, bed was. Yeah, if anything, it just says 26 the foot long. <laughs> Let's see what it says in numbers about Og. This is where he's in the battle. Let's see here. Let's see. And they turned and went up. Let's see. And then the Lord said to Moses, God, fear him. Let's see. Amorites. So they defeated him and his sons. So there's no survivor left. Yeah, I think, I think the reason why most people associate Og with a giant is because of the Rephaites. Let me see what it says about that. Rephaites. Let's see. Raphaim refers to either a people or a group of greater than average height and stature, possibly giants. Hmm. So that's what they associate him with as a giant. It says Raphaim. What are you trying to say? So, I mean, well, from what I've studied about Og of Bashan and others like that, um, I mean, He's got a fairly large bed, which, yeah, it could be for his bunch of wives, if he has a bunch of wives. I know that uh, it might surprise you, though, but... but uh, well, there's Mormonism right there in your Bible. <laughs> um, but the thing is, is that most throughout history, Jewish commentators and whatnot have interpreted the Rephaim as being giants of some kind, from what I understand. Because right here, let me see what we got here. Uh, I don't know. Things? I guess going back to the Septuagint translators and stuff like that, I just I found that I don't I do not trust ancient Jew or uh, Jewish commentaries um, any at any period in history. What must it seen Enoch? <laughs> well, I don't know. It, commentaries is how we got Judaism. Commentaries is how we got the oral tradition. Um, I mean, you got people back then that didn't know how to read. They didn't have their own scripture. It's just like the Roman Catholics. Uh, they, you went to, you, you know, they gave you their interpretation of scriptures. And then, you know, people like Tyndale come along and they make translations for the people and they, they die for it. it I mean, it, it's kind of like you had the scribes and all those people and the lawyers, they told the people what was in the scriptures and, you know, they read them to them, but they, their commentaries, is what corrupted, you know, 
you know, they're seeing ultimately, but commentaries took started taking precedence over the written. You had the halakha and the Haggadah, you had the written word and the oral tradition. And I mean, that's why, that's why we've got unrepentant Jews today because of ancient commentaries by the Jews. I just don't trust them at all. Well, in all fairness, the Septuagint is a, is actually quite a reliable translation. Yeah, and, I agree. And I was, because I was looking at something, I was looking at the Masoretic text and the Greek text on something in Psalm, Psalm 7. It's, it's something the Universalists always use, and they go to Young's literal translation to prove it. The problem is, is looking at, because we're, we were using Logo software, I actually have that on this computer. I just don't know where it's at right now. Um, they, it seems that what the text is doing is trying to convey two thoughts at once. Um, that God is both angry every day, but he's not revealing it every day. And what's weird is Young translates it, God's not angry every day. But that's not what the text is saying in the original language. It's not what it's saying in Greek. It's not what it's saying in Hebrew. And both of them are saying the same thing, just conveying, you know, two sides of the same coin is, is really what came across there. And I think that's just a lack of, it's just kind of our problem with languages and the you know and trying to bridge your problem for that gap speaking of gaps in the septuagint uh septuagint kind of supports the gap theory i just thought i'd throw that in there <laughs> that's, it. that's interesting hmm. oh hey guys uh so strong exhaustive concordance is about the raphaim the race that all of bishan is said to be from this is the definition says pronounced rafa um, it means a giant or race of giants, according to Strong's exhaustive concordance. So I just thought I'd throw that out there since we're hung up on Strong's. <clears throat> Say that again? I said, since we're hung up on Strong's, you want me to read that whole thing again? Yeah. Okay. Let me go there again. Yeah. Uh, it yeah. says, Rafa, Rafa aim. Uh, it says Rafa comes from the root word for invigorating a giant or race of giants. Raphaim. Rafa is the singular. Raphaim is the multiple. So you've got both definitions there. You've got a race or a race of giants. Mm -hmm. So you've basically got kind of implications from both sides of your guy's argument there, like a race of giants for one, which would suggest, you know, like you were saying with the Nephilim being really, really tall, or you've got a race. Yep which could be people like, like Brandon said, media giants kind of a thing. It's like an idiom. That's kind of what I'm getting from that. Yeah, is that, that is Hebrew, correct? Yeah, oh, Raphaim, yeah. Why did, uh, is that a particular race, or is that a word for actual race of giants, generically? Could that be a, a generalization term? So, I mean, and if so, then why wasn't that used in Genesis 6 if they were actually physical giants? I haven't a clue. God got it wrong. The same thing goes with That's why it. sons of God is used in Genesis 6 and in Job, which is arguably the oldest book in the Bible. Book ever. I mean, period. It could be the oldest book ever written. And that's all before Abraham. So why is sons of God used for, you know, angels there, but not 10 chapters later, you know, in Genesis 16 with the angels who visited Sodom and Gomorrah. Like, it just seems like they would call those angels sons of God too that visited Lot. Well, let me, let me throw this one out. You see what you think. So for example, we have, so angel at his base, Angelos, basically at his most common form means messenger, correct? Yeah, and it, and it seems to be always distinguished in scripture as heavenly angels, or it says angels from the seven churches, or, you know, it, it's, right. it's, sometimes what's translated as messengers in the epistles is also the word angelos. 
Right, exactly. So what I mean is that, so for instance, with, so let's say, for example, that Sons of God and uh, Angelos can both refer to the same exact creature, just for the sake of it. Malik or Malik or something like that in Hebrew. In Hebrew, yeah. So, for instance, would it make more sense to call somebody, you know, Angelos with the connotation of being a messenger versus calling them in their natural state as if they're not doing anything? For example, like, would you say, for example, that the angels in Sodom acted as messengers that day? Yes. Yeah. Uh, would you? Death and... Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, the angel of death, you know, also in Israel, also acted as a messenger. Um, the one, the, let's see, the angel who stood in the way of Balaam also acted as a messenger because he did have a message for Balaam, as a matter of fact. Um, so, I mean, it seems like to me that if you're writing a Bible, that it, or writing the Bible or a book of the Bible, that it would be more applicable in those situations to call an angelic creature an angel because it actually is showing the function of angelos as well versus referring to something that is the same creature but not, well, really sending a message at all, just kind of referring it to, a, to it in its natural state or, in fact, fallen state, if the case may be that. Well, fallen angel, would we agree fallen angels are the result of Satan's rebellion? Yeah, they're the guys who followed him, yeah. So, my problem is, is in all of Jewish tradition and all throughout Scripture from the Old Testament to the New Testament, if somebody's the son of something, that means they're they're doing the will. Uh, you know, if you're a son of God, you're doing the will of God. Uh, if you're the son of, you know, uh, son of Joseph, uh, you took up his, you know, career as a carpenter. Um, Don't forget, I, I you also got Jesus calling the um, the Jews, "You're of your father, the devil." Yes, exactly. That's that's perfect. I forgot about that. Uh, yeah. So, and, I, and, I, and I do, I do, I do believe that when Christ called Peter uh, Simon Bar Jonah, I don't think he was referring to his physical dad, because um, Peter was the first to preach the gospel to Gentiles um, in the Old Testament. Jonah, you know, he resisted it or whatever, but he was sent to preach to Gentiles in Nineveh. So they had the same office, they had the same duty, they had, you know, they fulfilled the same will. And I believe Christ was prophesying that Peter would be the first to pre uh, preach to the Gentiles. So son of, I, I believe is, you know, if you're the son of something, then that, then, or son of someone, then someone has to be your father. And if you're the son of God, then God is your father. If you're fallen because you've rebelled against God, then you're not doing God's will. You're not God's son. You're a bastard, and you know you're the son. Those if those angels on earth were fallen because they rebelled with Satan, then they were sons of Satan, not sons of God. That's my whole issue. With you know, that's the biggest red flag to the whole fallen angel view to me. And just just to add into what you just said there, Brandon. Also, is you got to look at that in that culture, a good name was something that they sought after. And if your father had a good name, by implication, that was passed along down the line, hence why you were known as somebody, the son of a guy with a good name kind of a thing. So that kind of reinforces what you were saying there, I think. It's like that in our culture up to, what, 25, 30 years ago. The, the same thing, you know, the, the good name. It's like, you know, if your father had a good name, you know, like, oh, you're such and such son. No yeah, that's how you. That's how you got so many son surnames today. You got Johnson, Jackson, Richardson, and so on. I, I mean, it's still, you know, it's still remnants of that in our culture today in our surnames. Okay. There is, but also with that, um, a lot of other names that are mixing in there, which were part of your trade, like Freeman. Uh, black was obvious sign for blacksmith. Freeman was because he used to be a slave. So I. I won't really go with that as much, but I understand what you're saying, but we also got to understand that sometimes last names were just something that was adopted because a lot of people were obviously come from a lot of fatherless areas, just took whatever name they wanted to take. 
So that kind of don't reinforce your argument there, I don't think. But uh, there's also instances where plenty of evil people are said to be son of good people. For example, Second Samuel 13, verse 1, where it says, Amnon, son of David, fell in love with Tamar. And we know what Amnon was. Son of David. Yeah, uh, well, Amnon was a rapist. Yeah, Amnon well, raped his half-sister. David's sister. son, literally. Well, oh, yeah. And he so, yeah. his sister. But that actually reinforces Brandon's argument. Because son of David, David was obviously the king and the authority figure, so it was the son of the authority kind of a figure. That well, kind of reinforces Brandon's point. Well, it was also, you know, his biological son. So, I mean, he was the son of David. He was he was begotten son of David. And I also believe, uh, going back, you know, if you go to John 3.16, there's a reason it, it doesn't say, you know, his only son. Like, you know, the, NIV, the, the wicked, nearly inspired version of NIV. But just kidding again. But it says, if you notice in the NIV, it says his own, his one and only son. Well, that's not true because, you know, we are the sons of God. You have the only begotten son. And it's making a point there. He's begotten of God. He's, he's the only son that's begotten of God. So, you know, because we're adopted. We're not the same as begotten. So. Okay. Um, so what about Luke three thirty eight, where it says, where it gives the, uh, the uh, genealogy, and then we have, where it comes to Adam, and it says Adam's father was God, or in some translations says the son of God. Well, yeah, Adam was uh, son of God. But is he not fallen? Well, he's not begot. Well, I guess he's he's created by him, but he's not begotten as in the sense of he's of the same substance. No, and I, well, but I it, wouldn't it, say it makes sense. I wouldn't. It would make sense that the blessing went to Seth, not to Cain. But, but, but here, I have a problem with that, too. How do, how do we know that all of Cain's line is evil? I've heard this over and over again, but how do we even prove that? Because, well, one thing, Cain's, Cain's line isn't even mentioned after it mentions his sons and his grandsons. But we jump yes. to Genesis 6, and then there's nothing said about Cain or Seth there. Nothing. Well, it, well you got to think of it like this. Genesis 4, it's, it's, a sign, it's the lineage of Cain. At mm -hmm. the end of it, it says Seth, you know, that Seth's lineage, this is when men begin to call upon the name of the Lord. Also, in the lineage of Cain, you got murderers, you know, uh, a murderer, I guess. Uh, they were obviously, you know, wicked. But the other thing is, it's later on in the New Testament, I, the verse number uh, escapes me right now, but Cain is called of the wicked one. Adam's called the son of God. Cain is called of, the, of that wicked one. So, I mean... Well, now we're moving into the Cain tradition of medieval times. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't you know. What I'm talking about, you, you know what I'm talking about? I don't know about, is that like the Mark of Cain stuff? or? Uh, no, it's a basic belief by uh, medieval scholars and monks. If you've ever read uh, Beowulf, whenever it gives Grendel's lineage, um, it says that Cain was his great, 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 great granddad. That's cool. I never but, noticed but, that. Yeah, uh, it also says that he's descended from the Nephilim, too, so um, to, from a race of giants. Um, so in the, in, the, in the Beowulf saga, uh, well, we got to understand context here. Beowulf is written about a Viking who, who fights monsters, but the narrator of the story is a Christian monk. So he's basically interpreting this story through a Christian's eyes because, well, the Vikings are pagan. And basically this monster, but really doesn't have a lot of description. Grindel doesn't have a lot of description at all. Um, basically he says, he starts tracing Cain's line back or, or Grendel's line back and basically said he's related to elves and goblins and other monsters spawned from the line of Cain. Interestingly enough. Well, Cain is actually known as the son of the wicked one. Uh, not verse I just posted, first John. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and obviously Beowulf was like you know from the Norwegian area so obviously we know the yeah. full heretics <laughs> <laughs> wait 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 you have to claim to be a Christian to be a heretic though no I can call anybody a heretic I want no you can't <laughs> the words have meaning Simon come on <laughs> Simon words have meaning come on come on 
Right, but the thing is, I'm the only one speaking English here, so my words have more meaning than all of y'all's. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. I always, I always heard the victor, uh, you know, got to decide. Right. Yeah. But uh, let me let me ask you this, Brent. Um, so, so here's my thing. Like, I don't pretend to know everything. I really don't. Um, but basically, despite the despite the fact, um so uh but anyway so there's like with the quote unquote angelic view versus uh sethite view right um so there's really with the with the angelic view there's not a lot nailed down with that as far as like you know like th there are the nut cases out there who like basically uh, like, I, I mean, I could give you like 12 guys to Google, but I don't recommend it. It's not worth your time who actually believe the whole UFO conspiracy theory nonsense. And planet, was it Nibiru? Nibiru, yeah. Uh, yeah, oh, oh yeah, the, the, the Anunnaki, all that I kind see of Chris thing. laughing. He better not be laughing at my accent. All, all that fun stuff. <laughs> um, so, for instance, let's say, like, I'm not, I'm not like sold on it 100%, you know, like, I mean, I do think there was something angelic going on, but I'm not saying that necessarily Nephilim have to be these half gods. Like, uh, you know, you know how, like, um, for example, uh, Adolf Hitler, you know, tried to create the Superman, the Ubermensch, you know, things like, you know, what I'm talking about. Yeah, he uh, he was looking for Nephilim. Well, Nephilim. Right, well, the idea of you know, kind of this salvation through you know, perfecting yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of like creating something that is a man, but superior in every single way, as far as physicality, intelligence. It like, like uh, some people call it transhumanism. You ever heard of that? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's like a false, false sense of salvation, you know, at the end of the day, pretty much what it is, you know. It seems like I've read somewhere, it was ironic that, speaking of giants and Nephilim and Hitler looking for the uh, supreme Aryan race, yeah, um, he was actually he sent his guy was Heimlich or whoever Heimlich like Himmler. Name. Yeah, he sent him to Tibet. Uh huh. And because they were known because Asians, you know, you know. <laughs> I'm sorry, know. not you. Somebody else. Go ahead. Oh, okay, okay. Not you. Uh, you're fine. You're fine. I'm gonna check chat here real quick. All right. Oh, never mind. Okay. Uh, Asians are known as you know, most Asians are you know shorter people, not a. Yeah not being racist, but the Tibetans back in the day, you know, were known as very tall, lanky, skinny. He was actually investigating the Tibetans to be the pure Aryan race because they were so tall and lanky and skinny. So I don't know. It's just, it's just funny when you try to piece all that stuff together with those. Right. Right. And, uh, so I mean, like, for example, like this is going to, I guess this would be the idea. So we know that demons can obviously manipulate the physical world to an extent in some way, right? To some extent, well, whether it it's... Depends. I think, uh, I don't know about that because that's something I've kind of wondered about a lot as well. Do the demons actually influence the physical world? I mean, like, for example, like with the, with the Garrison guy where, he, where he's able to break chains and things like that, you know what I mean? To that extent, anyway. You gotta, you gotta look at it as free cross and post cross, though. What's you that? You gotta look at it as free cross and post cross. Otherwise, you're gonna. There were demons post cross. cross oh yeah, definitely. Those distinctions, because after the cross, there is definitely an increased limitation, even on Satan's power. I mean, Satan doesn't have the power this side of the cross that he had the other side of the cross. That's I'd agree. About, I'd agree. About nations, though. No, 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 no. I'm not, I'm not talking about no longer able to deceive the nations, and that's in reference to the gospel going out versus yeah, the Gentiles, people. yeah. I'm not, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about Satan's Satan being, well, I mean, I guess that, that is still in reference there, but, yeah, I would say his power is even more limited. I would yeah. say he's angrier, and and he knows his time is is short. You know, he's like a wounded beast. You know, a wounded beast is going to fight harder than, 
a quarter of one will too. Well, you got to think, but before the you know before the cross, before that climax, Satan had control, you know, pretty much of all the Gentile nations. I mean, there were a few Gentiles called out, but exactly. yeah, he had literally possessed the uh, king of Tyre. And yeah, that's where we get our famous, you know, history of Satan is when the Prince of Tyre is getting prophesied to, and it kind of. It kind of goes back and forth between Satan and the prince himself, and it's just that's that's wild. But I, I, I don't know. see that because my recent looking at that, that's not exactly what I see. I don't see the king being possessed by Satan. Well, he's at least being equated with Satan. I at the very at the very least. Go that far either. Yeah, that's debatable. With the low Lucifer term, yeah. Yeah, with the whole Lucifer thing, um, and also Satan being in control and charge of the planet. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. It's it's on, only the authority he ever had was what it was given to him anyway. Yeah, and and back to the whole you know Ubermensch idea, the deal with with Hitler. So what I was getting at with that is that the the basic way I read it is that some sort of paganism was going on there, which we would all agree to. And what these people were doing were basically inviting demonic influence in some form, whether that's through possession, witchcraft, whatever that is. And, like, the idea is that, well, for example, in numbers, you know, if, if the whole problem was that we had people, you know, non-believers mixing with believers, for example, and... I mean, if you look in, in numbers when that happens, God simply tells Joshua just to wipe them out with the sword, which was seemed like a fairly easy task. Um, I mean, this gets so bad to the point that God has to send a worldwide flood and only spares eight people. And, and it, ironically, I actually found out kills one of Noah's brothers, Tubal Cain, because Noah actually had a brother who wasn't on the ark or he died earlier. Um, That's yeah. Nice. That 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 last part of chapter five goes with six. Because, Say again. Uh, I don't think that they necessarily have to tie together that last part of five. I don't think necessarily. You're breaking up real bad, bro. I don't think that the very first part of chapter six necessarily mm. have to segue. Segue. Yeah, in other words, it doesn't have to, it doesn't ha the first part of six could just as easily be the last part of five versus being, okay, look, here's what's going on. These people are marrying these people, therefore sin's gotten really bad, so i got to come destroy them. That, it doesn't necessarily have to read that way. Well, yeah, you got to think everything in the ancient scrolls, they all... Everything was a mess. It just run together. There were no chapters, no verse numbers. So that chapter four flows right into chapter five, and chapter five flows right into chapter six. Just like K uh, Caleb's questions and answers, they all just flowed together. <laughs> yeah, they're really long. Oh, shut up. <laughs> well, here's, here's another thing, too. You had to bring that up. Is is It's specifically stated. I'm not looking at scriptures right now. I'm going off memory. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it's... God flooded the earth to you know, wipe out all flesh because men's imagination, men's hearts, you know, men's hearts were continually wicked. It wasn't because the fallen angels made him upset. You know, you know what I'm getting. Get, you know what I'm getting at there. It right, but, man. but it, it wasn't the angels. It was man. But wouldn't you agree that wouldn't it be a pretty grievous sin for mankind to seek out demonic influence in their life? Wouldn't that be pretty kind of the pinnacle I'll of depravity? I just see men seeking out uh, floozy pagan women. That's all I, I see. Would, I don't see that as being necessarily for a worldwide flood. Well, if, if, if the children are tyrants and they're overrunning the world and using God's name in vain and authority to rule everybody, that would be uh, pretty nasty. Well, what was now, the reason given why why God flooded the earth? Men's hearts were continually wicked. wicked. And what's the difference between there and now? Just Jesus? I would say yes, actually. And because the reason why I want to argue that Satan didn't possess anyone 
is because of Ephesians 2. That's never changed. Which if, verse? If you're, if Ephesians 2, 1, dude. Never read it. Is that in the Bible? I don't think so. I've only got the book of Philippians in my Bible. Philippians? Philippians. 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 Um, but if you, I mean, if, oh. you just, if you kind of just look at it from that perspective, that if that there's, we're not looking for one antichrist. Antichrist means against Christ. You you don't believe in Christ. You don't follow Christ, or you use Christ to manipulate people. If if you just look at it that way, and we tie that back into what we were talking about. Is everyone locked up here? Why is Caleb staring at me like that? Caleb, because I am on lockup. Um, I'm listening to you though. But what is is it? John eight or John ten, where he says, you know, you are of your father, the devil. That's that's kind of the reality of the situation here. I mean, once once Adam sinned, he foregoes his dominion. He foregoes his rightful place. As ruler of this earth and forfeits it to Satan. Um, this is a this is a theme that we see continually throughout Scripture. We see two seeds. We see the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent. Not to be confused here with people having sex with serpents and then. Oh, you know, that's ridiculous! Having sex with serpents and drinking gasoline. It's it's just redeemed. Versus not redeemed is the best way to put it. We, we see that theme all throughout Scripture. So all of these people out there, they you know when they like the Pharisees, you know they they speak like their father, who when he speaks, he speaks out of his character, and it's lies and deceit. You know it's murder. Well, that's that's kind of how God equates these things. You know when we lie to people, we're Kind of murdering them a little bit. If Metallica is to be correct, and they are. Um, so I don't even know what we were talking about, but that's where. That's where. <laughs> uh, let me, let me, uh, having sex with serpents and drinking gasoline. I think uh, it be the title of Fearless' new album. I just yeah. couldn't be lost. Uh, I don't know if that's going to be the title of my new album, but I'll, I'll take into consideration. Um. <laughs> I, I can add to that with uh, unbelievers redeemed with unredeemed. Think about King Solomon. He was, you know, I believe he was elect. He did write Ecclesiastes. But Obviously, he, he had the Holy Spirit. Huh? He was a pagan lover. Yes. He, he had all these pagan wives. And look what happens to Israel as a result of that. Yeah. He got split in two. God split it in half. So, I mean, that's a pretty big judgment, you know? Yeah, it, it is. And that was all, you know, all because of that. We've also yeah. got to take into consideration that Jesus was a plan from before the foundation of the world. So the difference between Noah's time and our time is Jesus. Surely Jesus actually covers that time at the same time. I agree. According to Romans 3.25, he does. So therefore, it can't be any different then than it is today. So what was the reason why God could be heard? If it's just because man's heart was continuously evil, what's the difference today? There is not. Because he, he wanted to then, and he doesn't want to now, and he promised not to ever do that again. With there water, is. anyway. Yeah, that's, that's kind of the only reason I can think Cause of. Because he, he wanted to. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and then he set an example. I would say that there is a difference, though. Um, of course you would, because you're argumentative. Sure. <laughs> but, I mean, really, what, what would be the point then? Ha I mean, has something changed with the advent of Christ? No. It hasn't? No. Well, um, the, Does Acts 2 the, he, the, the, the difference is the gospel goes out to the world, not just to whoever God picks out, you know, yeah, but, not a small lady. Other things have changed too. Uh, or, the covenant. Are, are you all going to the rebuilt third temple? What's wrong with that? 
<laughs> yeah. They've Don't already got started. it out. They got tiny models built. They've got the they've got the uh, lineage of Levi's all marked Just down. Think of the job creation as well. Yeah. Uh, they, got the, they got the Aaronites, all them guys. They got them all. They got they they even got the red heifer. Believe it or not. <laughs> no, I'm not kidding you. That is actually true. They have a red heifer picked out. Kim Rillbarger actually argues that that is a form of the abomination of desolation. Yeah, I agree that. And sacrificing animals for, you know, forgiveness of sins when Christ is already here. That is the trampling of Christ's blood as laid out in Hebrews. Yeah. And, I don't see how much worse it can get. You know, speaking of the Temple Mount, I know the uh, scriptures speak much of, well, in the Old Testament it speaks of God using Satan as a, you know, the wicked as the sword. Isn't it ironic that you've got the second largest religion in the world is insane and ruthless savages has got their mosque on top of exactly where the temple goes and everybody is terrified. Well, there's actually, that's up for debate as well because they uh, did find some archaeological evidence that the temple wasn't where they actually thought it was. And yeah, it's actually, a different location now, and they've got the go ahead to build it. Yep. Well, they're building it. I don't know. I just see it. Even if their temple is honored, it, if it was in their imagination, if they got the priest, the high priest, if 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 they're wrong, how many people are going to die before they get the right person to? They've got genetic markers, which I find fascinating because genetically speaking, Israel comes from Gentiles. Unless you're black. <laughs> yeah, well. All the above. They, there you go. You're as pagan as they get. Jewish, black, white, whatever. I'm all of it. <laughs> but I mean, seriously. Abraham. What, what was he? Was he a Jew first? No, he was a, a Samarian. So he was a Gentile. Actually, yep. wasn't he descended from a guy called Heba? He was a Jew of the heart, man. There you go. There you go. Hebrews. He was a Hebrew. He was actually called a Hebrew as well, was uh, Abraham. So Hebrews were first pagans. Yeah. You guys yep. are Jews too. <laughs> Circumcision of the heart, bro. Well, yeah, I'm a – well, and, you know, according to that one black Hebrew Israelite we had in here, because my father's side had a uh, had a Cherokee in it, then I'm technically a Jew by his standards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you got some authority now. Go, go talk to them fools. Yeah. Oh, that ain't even worth it. <laughs> It's like me, me claiming to be a Cherokee. That's like that's like Elizabeth Warren claiming to be a Cherokee. Seriously, I was going to go there if you didn't. Yeah. I, oh, yeah. That woman. <laughs> love, love Trump or not? When they asked him about Elizabeth Warren and he said, "You mean Pocahontas?" That was brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was absolutely brilliant. I laughed so hard when I saw that tweet. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Well, the thing is, I think I believe the Native Americans, um, you're only eligible for the powwow if uh, your lineage traces back on the maternal side. Yeah, yeah, because the uh, well, if you're Cherokee, Cherokee are matrilineal. If you're uh, if you're any of the Plains tribe, the Cheyenne or Sioux, you have to be through the father's side because they're patrilineal. All went quiet. Well, well, there we go. Somebody, somebody threw a piece of paper on the ground outside. I had to take a moment. Uh oh. <laughs> you all right? Uh, never mind. That was a joke. Nope. <laughs> Nobody got. Okay, it was from a movie. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if y'all. What, what movie is that? The Native American standing there and somebody throws trash on the ground and he starts crying. Oh, that's a commercial. That was a real famous commercial back in the 80s. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah that's what I was <laughs> okay. <laughs> that wasn't a lie. 
What? Yeah. yeah, you speak up, heretic. You heard what I said. No, you it, said. He, he can't speak up. He's had his tongue cut out for blasphemy. Hey, uh, about the debate, let's talk about the law for a second. Sure. What did you mean about the Mosaic law not yet being given? For example, uh, not necessarily the moral law, but like certain laws, for example, like incest. Yeah, that was a good argument. Because, for, for example, we know that Abraham married his half-sister. I mean, he admits to marrying his half-sister. Um, he, uh, I mean, whenever he... What, directly from him. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, like, whenever the guy, whenever he's confronted, was it by Pharaoh? Yeah, because I remember his, his son, Isaac, does it too. But anyway, but, uh, yeah, he says, why didn't you tell me she was your sister? He's like, I haven't lied to you. She is my sister, the son of my father, or the daughter of my father. So, it's Doesn't like, that law say something about, like, from here forward or something like that? I need to look that up. Right, but, from here I mean, forward. Obviously, the uh, scientific explanation is is genetic code wasn't as corrupted, and it started with two people, Adam and Eve. I mean, they yeah. had, but as far as uh, moral um, Basically, his sister was hot. So, <laughs> what's the problem? Yikes! <laughs> and you got to think he was ten years old when she was born. So, I mean, <laughs> my, my counter argument against that is, and she was pretty hot. Don't forget, because I think she was like ninety years old, and that Egyptian king was like, well, "Hey, she's a bit of our eye, Abraham." At ninety years <laughs> old, come on, bro. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. Oh man. <laughs> Oh, that was a picture of the resurrection, by the way, because their wombs, uh, Abraham's loins and Sarah's wombs were dead, so they had to be resurrected. Yeah, that's a good point. Isaac was a resurrection. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah that's a good point. But, uh, yeah, sin, sin, man. I don't see how uh, the law given, I mean, when Cain murdered Abel, there was no law that thou shalt not murder. Yeah. So I, I don't understand why it would it would be relevant that the law hadn't been given to not marry outside of you know. I would say, but 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 here's the question: Would they have considered Cain outside an outsider? Because I mean, it's Uncle Cain for goodness sake. I mean, it's Seth's brother. Well, he was marked. Well, yeah, marked it so nobody would kill him. I mean, God had mercy on Cain, and Cain was a great city builder, from what we understand. I mean, his grandkids were able to make stone or steel tools and things like that. Hey guys, can I make uh, one quick point? Sure, go for it. Yeah, one thing I was going to point out when you look at the uh, account of Noah, uh -huh. and he he's told to take how many uh, you know seven pairs of clean and one pair of unclean animals. Well, the law hadn't been given yet then, but yet no one knew what a clean and an unclean animal is. So I would just contend that there was stuff giving, given to people who lived at that time. We just don't have the benefit of having it recorded in Scripture. But I think you kind of have to assume that they knew some, some things back then, even before the law was given to Moses. Well, Romans... Who argues that there that the Gentiles know in their hearts, you know, certain aspects. In other words, it's kind of built in. Conscious. Us as human beings, you know, we really have to go to the Imago Dei here and the character of God. Yeah, I mean, everybody has a conscience. It's yeah, but I don't think your conscience is going to tell you what's a clean animal before God and what's not. I mean, everybody loves bacon. Right. But is your conscience going to, if, if, if God, if, if, uh, if your lineage has been blessed with this, with the lineage of the seed and Adam's passing down, because Adam knew how to do sacrifice because, you know, Christ in the garden, uh, I believe that the clothing, the, the animals, they close themselves in, uh, lettuce or whatever. And lettuce. God offered them a, <laughs> You know, an animal skin that was a, that was the that was a blood sacrifice. So Adam knew what the you know what to do. So he obviously passed that down. So these religious authorities were obviously kind of this knowledge passed down was you know they were supposed priests. They were supposed to be anyway. But uh, 
my point is, is how could anybody's conscience that knew God existed, if if they were marrying pagan women, and the the women were, you know, the women are responsible for raising the children, at least back then anyway, um, turning their children away with their pagan religion, away from the Lord that you knew was the boss. How is that not tearing at your conscience? And you know, that's the, that's they have to know that's wrong. Romans one addresses that, and we have examples. I mean, Genesis uh, six, I think, or no, Genesis five says the same thing. You know, there's a, they they saw that they were beautiful. Um, Solomon, King Solomon, does the same thing. And God even warns him, this is going to happen if you don't rein this in. And what does King Solomon do? He goes and marries an Egyptian queen. You know? Well, Cleopatra was white, by the way. Do what? I said Cleopatra was white, by the way. Yeah, she was a Greek. Man, whatever, dude. There's the Queen of Sheba, Queen of the South, is mentioned. I would just have assumed that, you know, I, I know he was visited by an Egyptian queen. Uh, that's all I'm saying. The, the whole point is not what was her skin color or where was her location. The point is, is he was going after pagan queens. He was marrying them. That, that the warning is there by God is that these women are going to do this to you, and yet what does he do? Keeps marrying well, so right and it, there is another argument against Mormonism. But and hey. it's kind of it's kind of like a double stacked sin because it's like um, if you marry a pagan woman, I said no, but then she's going to turn your kids against me. Well, Solomon he not only married pagan women women. But he let them bring their idols yep. into his house in the temple. It's like it's like twofold. <clears throat> but what about Jacob? Didn't Jacob steal someone's idols and keep them? His wife did, Rachel. Wow, man. Yeah, and then <laughs> her funny thing is her excuse uh, for when her dad searched in the tent is uh, she he wants her to get up off of her bed so he can search her bed where the idols are hidden. And she says, sorry, Dad, I'm on my period. And he's like, never mind, walks out of the tent. <laughs> no wonder that Muslims treat women the way they do them. Because the women, they're all problems. Well, going back to that, like uh, Darren said earlier, you know, they knew what the clean animals were and what the dirty animals were, even though. But yet, the command after the flood doesn't really tell you which ones you can and can't eat. It just says, flesh is food for you now. But there again, so they actually knew instinctively. But that's the same thing you just talked about with Rachel. Her father didn't want to go near her because obviously you would be classed as unclean such a woman or go near a woman who's basically on a period. Again, yeah. that law still hadn't been given again. So there must have been some kind but, uh, of understanding of well, it. Well, also, not that I don't know if this helps or not, but there was a group of Middle Eastern people called the Shashu. You got to look them up if you get a chance that lived in in what we know today is the Levantine Strait, which is where Israel, Jordan, places like that are. And uh, from best we can tell, they were pagans. Um, but they also had laws very similar to Muslims and Jews not eating pork and things like that. But they were as pagan as the day is long. I don't know if that adds anything in the conversation, but it's out. So, so they're only pagans for like eight hours a day? I guess so. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, I think, but honestly, I think there's a practicality there too. If we wanted to get down to real practicalities, but that's kind of a rabbit trail. So, um, let me let me ask you this. Uh, so, uh, do you remember in First Corinthians chapter eleven about head coverings? Yeah. Me or Brandon? Uh, both of y'all. All everybody here. I remember. Air, everybody here. I used to go to a church that did it, so I know about it. Okay. So uh, it makes this interesting statement, and uh, I was reading it. Well, R.C. Sproul Jr. actually had a blog about this that I was reading about it, 
I was interested in what he was going to say, and I'll tell you what he says after I read the passage. But anyway, so it's talking about, you know, the, you know, a woman ought to have a head covering, you know, and most people say that's a woman's hair, which I would have to agree. Um, but anyway, uh, chapter, uh, 1 Corinthians 11, verse 8, For a man was not made for woman, but a woman for man. Neither was man created for a woman, but woman for man. That, uh, that is why a, a wife ought to have a symbol of authority on her head. And it has this interesting clause. Listen to this. Because of the angels. Yeah, I've always wondered about that one as well. And, and R.C. Sproul Jr., when he got to this, he was exegeting every part. And when he got to this part, he said, I have no idea what that means. <laughs> At least he was honest. Yeah. Or they could mean what? Angels in heaven. You heard me. Get close to the mic. Um, I'm as close as I'm weren't the uh, church authorities called angels too? I don't know. I have to look uh, into that. Messengers. The, it could it could be translated either way, but in a way, it does kind of make sense uh, that it would be angels. Now to to use that to show that you know angels would start finding women attractive if they didn't have their heads covered with hair uh i don't i don't see it because i find a woman with long hair more attractive than a woman with short hair absolutely yeah i saw a man the other day i was like not get man it wasn't right well, it's easy to do. I used to have hair down to my waist back in the days. And uh, it's amazing. So did I. I used to work in a bar and some guys used to get drunk and pinch my ass all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, gum it, dude. <laughs> when I turned around and I had a beard on going, what's up, dude? Did they, did they like freak out when you turned around? Yeah, oh yeah. It was like the most uncomfortable silence for them ever. <laughs> It's like, I'm just going to go over here and get me another beer. It's like a thought, make it a whiskey. <laughs> yeah, I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> I think what Chase was really trying to say is he's attracted to women with burkas. Uh-oh. Chase is just attracted to anything female. Oh, that's scary. Especially if she's got a Newcastle accent. <laughs> Oh, hey, okay. so I know where you're going with that now. <laughs> it actually, there's actually a D, Nick. There's actually a, let me see what it has here as far as commentary goes. Yeah, yeah it says, uh, or messengers, people sent to observe and report. There you go. Well, but that could still be angels. <laughs> that that's that's true. Let me see what the comp. Let me see. Let me put out a couple of commentaries here. See what we can find. Just not Matthew. Go Calvin or don't bother. I won't. Work. Well, how about Matthew Henry? Matthew yeah. Henry's good. I like Matthew Henry. Yes, I know you do. Uh, let me see. <laughs> what about uh, Charles Finney? Oh, oh, go. please, please. Let moment while I vomit. Okay, let me see here. Let's see, because like this is from what about El Eliacott? Never heard of her. Okay. Let me go down to Henry. So here begins particulars respecting the public assembly in that's an inside chapter in the abundance of spiritual gifts bestowed on the Corinthians. Some abuses had crept in. But as Christ did the will and sought the honor of God, so the Christians should avow his subjects, subjection to Christ. It's doing his will and seeking his glory. We should address and have it avoid everything that may dishonor Christ. A woman was made to be subject to a man because made for his help, because she was made for his help and comfort. She should do nothing in Christian assemblies which look like a claim of being equal. She ought to have power that is veiled. Fail on her head because of the angels. Their presence should keep Christian all that is wrong while in the worship of God. Nevertheless, the man and the woman were made for one another. And that's all he says. That's all he says, pretty much. Oh, well, let's see. Where's Calvin? He said, No, you said you don't like pool. I don't care. 
Who is pool anyway? I just don't. I don't read commentaries from anyone that I don't know theologically. Pool, man, I don't know about him. Uh, he's all right. Yeah, Calvin doesn't say anything about it. Or Knox, for that matter. Huh. What about Gil? What's he got here? Let's see. Because of, let's see. It is necessary because of the angels. Various are the senses given to these words, some taking them in a proper, others in a figurative sense, some in a proper sense of angels, and these either good or bad. Tertullian understands them as evil angels. That a woman should cover her head at in a time of worship, lest they should lust her. Though much rather the reason should be lest they should irritate and provoke lust in others. It, but it, it is better to understand them of good angels who attend the assemblies of the saints and observe the air and behavior of the worshipers. Wherefore, women should cover their heads with respect to them and not give offense to those pure spirits by indecent appearance. So Gill actually says that they're actually angelic beings, both either good or evil, it sounds like. Back on it, Gil. But now, I, I just, what I see here is if you look in some of these, some of these, uh, you know, prosperity. Or yeah. Just think of like a Methodist church. You think of a woman sitting on the front row, preachers preaching, deacons, whatever are around, and she's, you know, flashing her leg. Uh, or how many? Are you going to say something else? <laughs> Yeah, whatever. But how many accounts do you have of preachers committing adultery? Like preachers commit adultery all the time. Like it's if you yeah. if you look it up. I mean, I don't know who wrote it. Many people have wrote articles on it, but I, I think John Popper had a great article on it. Many many church leaders and preachers have committed adultery with yeah. members of the church. So I kind of see that as don't be trying to tempt the, you know, the saints. Like I, I don't know, but. That's kind of the way I see it. But I've got to use the bathroom. I'll be right back, guys. Well, right. Are you doing a bathroom break? Lydia says she wants to see a picture of me with long hair. There we go. Wait, hold on. Holy cow. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah. I know that's you. Dude, dude, you could have been in a death metal band back in the 80s, and you would have fit right in. I was. You what? Seriously? I used to play guitar, bro, yeah. Did you ever listen to Bolt Thrower? Yeah, no bolt thrower. Dude, I love bolt thrower. I stand corrected. I thought you were bluffing. Ah, called you out, uh, girl. I had long hair too. Y'all want to see a picture of that? Go on, I'm so we, it so Let's see Brandon with long hair. <laughs> okay, where is it? Let's see. Oh. Uh, here it is. Let's see. I might have to grow this back if I make this album, guys. Yeah? Yeah. I might, I might just have to do that. Let's see. You could always use this one as your, uh, your actual cover. Well, you know, like might be a good idea Simon now that you say that because you know you can manipulate photos and stuff now to make it look album covers and things like that I could probably do something with that there you go that, I have, that looks like a good album cover yeah I could put like make you look like a zombie or whatnot <laughs> that, that, would be, that would be pretty whoa dude <laughs> seriously you were you were serious back in the day weren't you uh, yeah bro <laughs> okay. He actually got asked to go to Holland. Oh, really? Yeah. Here, here we go. There it is. Yeah, take a good look. That looks like a girl. Yep. Ah, knew ah, you, I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> hang on, hang on a minute. Gonna keep the beard. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the one thing I that's the one whole reason I grew the beard is because I was actually mistaken for a chick on more than one occasion. I'm not surprised. <laughs> See that? <laughs> yeah, there there's one. I mean, when I worked at my job at the meat market, like literally, like at least three times in a week, somebody would say "ma'am" to me. Oh, so sorry. one so one day I finally had enough, and I just st started ignoring people that said "ma'am" to me. 
<laughs> and like non gender bi binary thing name. Yeah, and so like, I had the one time I was bent over and I was unloading this cart full of meat, and like this lady says comes up behind me and says, "Ma'am, is this discount price, ma'am, ma'am?" And I'm like, hopefully she stops and says, "Sir, please, for the love of God." And she says it like 12 times. And I'm like, I said, are you talking to me? And she's like, oh, my God. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, are you all talking about beards? No, my I, my long hair. Caleb looks like a girl in his pictures. I did. That's why I grew that thing right there, as pitiful as it is. That's cute. Oh, my little, my little billy goat. Hey, I actually, you know, I actually have a pair of horns I can wear, Simon. Do I really a pair of goat mom? horns. Do I really need to look into this more? Really? I mean, well, well, you know, you keep saying I have a goat affiliation. Like a couple of years ago, when I was at, uh, when I was at Ren Fair, I just my dad, my dad always calls me a billy goat because of my beard. Uh -huh. um, and so I went, I was at Ren Fair, and I. Just decide what to buy because I always try to get something on there because you just can't find stuff like that. So I found this guy that was selling like little handmade goat horns that look like actual goat horns that you wear on your head. And so I bought a pair and I put them on and <laughs> it looked pretty cool. I look like look like Mr. Tumnus from uh, Chronicles of Narnia. God help us. <laughs> then I really look like the devil then, wouldn't I? <coughs> yeah, fans people. <laughs> oh, yeah, you look like Nimrod. Nimrod. Okay, where, where is that stuff about where is that stuff about Nimrod to come from anyway? I always hear about that that Nimrod uh, was. Well, you gotta look at the epic of Glo uh, Gilgamesh. Gil <laughs> Gilgamesh. Man, I know the epic of Gilgamesh. That's that's Nimrod, man. Gilgamesh. Yeah. Yeah, I, I've heard people make that connection too. Um, to well, Gilgamesh. Well, the scriptures say Nimrod was a great hunter. Yeah. And, uh, back in the day, what they would do is say. He killed a bull. Yeah, he does actually kill a bull in the myth, yeah. Yeah, uh, he would put on the horns. He would wear the tail. Um, hmm. That's kind of where you get your picture of Satan. Really? Uh, and, and if you think about it, he, he did build the first civilization, like the first, like, you know, I wouldn't call it a metropolis, but first civilization, you got to think post-flood, animals are breeding, people's running around getting attacked by lions and stuff, and you got this great hunter coming around protecting everybody, and gets people yeah. together and socialize it in markets and stuff. So yeah. Kind of his thing. So, but that, that but didn't, didn't, he kind of, didn't he kind of start out a good guy and then kind of went bad, sort of? Or was he always bad? I don't know. I, I believe he was always... Uh, Democrat. Wicked. <laughs> <laughs> what did he say? Democrat. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, Democrat. Yeah, that's, that's probably... Actually, Democrat comes from the same root word as demon. You don't know that? Not surprised. Communism comes from the same root word as uh, communion. Which really? Don't fit. Don't fit at all. Uh -uh. It, it kind of does if you uh, look at them, but it's it's. If you're a socialist in Canada. <laughs> yeah. Cool. All right, let's get this wrapped up. So, guys, yeah. Me. Okay. I'm just going to start. About time you got your ass on here, bro. I'm glad you joined us. Yeah, for sure. So, what was I going to say? I can't remember. I forgot. We were talking about Holmes and Gilgamesh. Oh, that's what I was going to say. So, what we're going to do is wrap it up. Just like Brandon gave away the debate in his first answer, <laughs> we're going to give away the, uh, the rest of the time to somebody else to open up in prayer. So, who hasn't prayed? I know I prayed last week. No, I prayed last week. <laughs> Remember, I was wearing the beard hat when I did it. <laughs> How about you close us in prayer, Brandon? Oh, man. That's I'll, what happens I'll... when you don't join us enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, Lord, uh, I pray that you have got all of us here today and interpreting your word and bless everyone here. And I pray you will continue to edify us as uh, iron sharp, sharpens iron, that we can help each other to grow in your word. Yeah. And um, 
May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Amen. All right, guys. Love you, lots. All right. Love you guys. Love you. Take care. Good night, guys.